Yeah, so that's, that's right. I'll be talking about um, joint probabilistic inference of causal structure. And this is work coming out of UC Santa Cruz with my advisor, Lisa Gator. Um, so I'm going to motivate this talk from the perspective of hybrid approaches to causal discovery. But it, perhaps the most natural motivation was actually uh, Frederick's in, awesome talk in the beginning. And so that's a great thing to kind of keep in mind as a primer for this. Um, so I'll motivate this problem, and then I'll introduce and formulate it, and then I will detail my approach, and then show some initial results. So we're all familiar now with the traditional approaches to structure discovery. With constraint-based approaches, we're going to prune the space of models based on structural constraints, um, removing and orienting edges based on B separation, acyclicity constraints, and then for search-based methods, we're going to search the space by adding and removing edges, and then at each point, evaluating the model spit to data while trading off model complexity. So going from there, hybrid approaches are kind of a well-studied way to merge these two kinds of approaches and get the best of both worlds. So they both constrain and prune the search space, but also still perform the kind of the optimization over model structures. And the conventional view of hybrid approaches has been to basically initialize or warm start a greedy search algorithm with the output of a constraint-based approach. And I'm just listing very, you know, two canonical ways, just two of them. Um, Dash and Drudzel use the output of PC as input to uh, various DAG search procedures. And then there's the um, MMHC classic hill climbing approach to optimize over model structures after you've pruned based on constraint-based methods. But then there's a different view which looks at structure discovery as an inference problem. So in this view, uh, we're basically associating each random variable, we're associating random variables, CIJ and AIJ, with the existence of each possible causal and adjacency edge. And Again, here are just two examples of this, this type of viewpoint. And um, in 2010, uh, Jacques et al. cast this as a linear program. And they optimized the regularized likelihood subject to some global acyclicity constraints. And then um, very much like, uh, pretty much exactly like what Fred Frederick talked about, um, there's the encoding D separation constraints as a max out problem. And then using a solver and getting um, the joint, joint consistent assignments to all the variables. And these are just two approaches to uh, looking at causal structure discovery as an inference problem. So from there, I'm going to uh, introduce our problem of joint probabilistic inference of causal structure. So the idea here is that uh, we're going to extend that inference viewpoint and look, look at a probabilistic model. So we, we want a model over the possible causal structures, and we want this model to tell us which structures are more or less likely. So to formalize this, we basically we want a distribution over those CI, CIJs and the AIJs, given the independence evidence that we get from statistical independence tests. And what we're looking for is the best assignment to these variables under our distribution. And this should um, give us the causal structure. And in such a model, what we would do, what we'd like is to combine the standard forms of constraints like acyclicity and deseparation. And we'd like to combine this with probabilistic reasoning. So that's sort of where I'm going to go with this. So now I'm going to go into how I design such an approach. I'm using this framework called probabilistic soft logic, and it's a framework for working with soft probabilistic constraints that are described using a logic-like syntax, the first order logic-like syntax, as you can see. And under the hood, what's going on is that um, these logical constraints encode a joint distribution over assignments to all the variables in the model, and this is what supports that probabilistic reasoning. And I'm going to go into this in detail over the next few slides. But to start with, a PSL model consists of weighted logical rules. But here, the predicates, the predicate literals in these clauses actually represent continuous random variables. And I'm going to break this down in a, in a sec. 
Um, and because, like I said, we're reasoning with continuous values, we have to use relaxations of logical operators that work on the real interval. So like in first order logic, we substitute rules with values from a network. So in our case, suppose we have these four causal variables, then, and we have this particular rule up here, then one possible grounding is as follows, and note that each instantiated predicate in this case maps exactly back to those causal and adjacency variables that I showed before, but in this case, these are continuous variables instead of binary. So um, like I said, we use a convex relaxation of Boolean logic, and here we're using one called Lukashevitz logic to interpret the truth or uh, satisfaction of these rules. And it, I'm not going to go into the derivation here, but it turns out that looking at one minus the truth value of the rule, or what we call distance to satisfaction, we get an expression that is the max of a linear function of the variables and zero. So this is a hinge loss function. And the intuition behind this value here is that it's the degree of violation, in some sense, of this rule based on the assignments to the variables in this rule. So it's sort of how much this rule is being violated. Um, so based on that, now I'm going to go to the underlying graphical model. I'm going to go look at the underlying distribution. And this is called a hinge loss Markov random field. And this is a joint distribution over all our unobserved variables conditioned on the evidence. So this is a CRF model. And note that inside the exponent, there's a sum of weighted hinge loss feature functions. And these are exactly our potential functions. And as we saw, the distance to satisfaction for each ground rule was a hinge loss function. So these are exactly our potentials, and we have one per ground rule. So basically what happens is um, we have a ground rule, and then the distance to satisfaction formula for this ground rule gives us the potential function that scores the assignments to these variables and tells us which assignments are more likely or less likely. But the key takeaway and just the, the, the main intuition that I want to get across here is that in this model, the intuition from map inference, which is to find the best assignment to all the, uh, the random variables, in our case, it'll be the causal and the adjacency variables, is to minimize the distances to satisfaction of the ground rules. And because we had a con uh, convex inference objective over continuous values, uh, we get a convex optimization problem, which means we can find an exact solution to map inference in polynomial time. And here, uh, we use an efficient uh, message passing based algorithm called alternating direction method of multipliers, um, and it's highly scalable. And uh, we also have algorithms for weight learning, and this, this also supports reasoning with latent variables and so on. So, now that I've given some background on the framework, I'm going to talk about how we can encode a causal structure discovery algorithm in such a framework. So I just want to kind of recall or you know, bring back to mind the PC algorithm. So um, I'm going to encode the constraint-based PC algorithm using PSL, and this is just our initial approach here. Um, just to recap, PC doesn't support latent variables and confounders, but of course sub subsequent extensions of it do. And um, it's based on pruning edges based on constraints and independence tests. Um, in our variant, a key difference that I'm going to show is that instead of early pruning and only using single independence tests, we will use multiples. And um, I showed those, those weighted rules, and in this case I'm going to set all the rule weights to one. So um, the first rule here that I encode is looking at the independence test between variables based on the conditioning set, or SEP set in this case. And this reasons about just adjacencies between um, two potential causal variables. And this is exactly like the skeleton phase of PC, except uh, just want to note that there's, there's no need for early pruning which means that what we can do is we can basically uh, sub we can use multiple tests with different separation sets as evidence for this rule. And um, 
again, this is kind of an eyeful, but just the takeaway here, um, looking at the picture, is just that here we're looking at these chains of variables or unshielded triples, and you're, we're using the deseparation criterion to orient V structures. Um, and this is just a simple rule that's based on looking at the middle variable and checking whether it's in the separation set or not. Um, and again, this is just a simple rule from PC. And then the next few rules, just to give the high level intuition, is exactly like PC, is going to avoid cycles and additional V structures. So in this case, we're trying to avoid cycles. In this rule, we're trying to uh, deter further V structures and more of the same um, with this type of rule. So I just want to kind of uh, get across the intuition that we're taking the, the standard constraint-based PC algorithm, but then re-encoding it in this particular, particular soft logic language. And um, so I want to now kind of give some results about what happens when we're using this soft probabilistic constraint-based approach to do um, joint causal inference. And um, initially, this is just, these are just initial results, and we're working with um, the synthetic data from the causal challenge repository. And here, we, we just have this uh, synthetic causal DAG involving 12 binary variables, and um, there's 2,000 examples from this network that are, that are there. Um, just to give some details on what kind of experiment I'm running here, um, I use the G-squared independence test um, for both PC and PSL, and I set the max separation set size to three. Um, so that just means that the, the largest size of the conditioning sets that you can have when you're running those independence tests is three. And I run basically both PC and the PC, or what I'm calling the PC-PSL algorithm. And I'm just going to compare to the causal ground truth since we have the underlying true DAG. Um, and PSL, recall that it, it gives us these continuous values as outputs. So we have to, to do a fair comparison. I'm going to round the outputs. And to select the best threshold to round, um, I'm running cross-validation based on causal edges. So what I'm showing here is just um, some, some initial results based off of um, threefold cross-validation and looking at the average causal edge prediction accuracy and F1 score. And um, the key takeaway here is that it's, it's interesting to see that this, this different type of soft encoding of a constraint-based algorithm um, is, in, on this particular data set, it's um, doing a little bit better than the PC algorithm. Um, So basically what we did in this, this particular project is um, devised a joint inference framework for causal structure discovery using these probabilistic soft constraints. And um, I think that going forward, and this is something we're kind of actively studying and working on, the, the powerful thing will be, like, like Frederick pointed out, is incorporating and in, in a very flexible way, incorporating prior domain knowledge for causal edges. And with a framework like PSL, which was um, easily extensible, uh, we can use lots of different kinds of domain knowledge sources. So we can look at uh, stuff that's mined from text. We can look at ontological constraints if we have them, and perhaps even priors coming from variable selection techniques and other types of um, independence tests and statistical tests and so on. Um, and of course, the, the other big thing is to do you know, ex extensive experiments on both real and other synthetic data sets. So um, that's all I have. I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Martha. So I guess that it's complete. That's a good question. and. Um, We haven't done that analysis, and it's partially because it's, to me, it's not completely obvious how to do it with this probabilistic framework in the mix, as well as having the constraints. 
so since since something that's you know it's not just the standard pruning and orienting that's going on so it's kind of um, okay and then the other question I had was um, I'm not familiar with PSL but so is there a good understanding of the optimization that's going on when you have conflicted constraints yes um, and basically the it's when you have conflicted constraints, basically the weight is going to become important, the rule weight is going to become important. So um, rules that are weighted higher, basically you're going, it, you're going to incur more penalty when you violate those as opposed to the rules that have lower weight. And so that's why weight learning becomes important because from training data you can basically learn which of these constraints will be more important to satisfy versus the others. It's not, it's not MaxSat. We do have some theoretical work on connections between MaxSat and the optimization for PSL, but um, this isn't MaxSat. So, yes, yeah, please. Um, it's possible that I missed it on the slides, but yeah. can you say anything about some of the like runtime or scaling, how many variables or that sort of thing with whatever implementation you've got right now? Yeah. Um, so the runtime, just to, just to put it out there, the runtime of PSL itself as, a, as an algorithm, the inference algorithm would take, would scale to, uh, at the, on the order of the number of ground rules. So scale linearly the number of ground rules. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, this particular algorithm, um, this PC encoding of PSL, as of right now, um, is a little bit limiting just because it's this first order logic. It's not it's not this propositionalized logic. So you can you can start to see some of those rules that I was showing where you have kind of causes and causes and additional stuffs. When you have a lot of variables, um, you're going to get tons of groundings. It's just going to blow up. Um, so I have some ideas on how to scale or how to differently encode this kind of thing in the future to scale better. And I think that. Um, it will be promising to be able to do that. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.